Last Pint Productions presents the New Way podcast. The New Way contains adult content, and new episodes are released most Wednesdays. So back off, man. We're professionals. Listener discretion is advised. So you were in Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Were you in the shit? Yeah, I was in the shit. Last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, that he'd melt my brain. Here's how you get him. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Everybody wants to be naked and famous. Everybody wants to be just like me and naked. Will you help teach me about this? What is it? A new way. Hello and welcome once again to the New Way Podcast. We break down pop culture so you don't have to. I'm your host, Matt Shank, joined by my fearless co-host, Ben Wilson, in the studio. Fearless. I like fearless, it. sometimes. And joined across the seas and lands in, a, in an area that I understand from the movies has a lot of vampires on the boardwalk, uh, Mr. Nicholas Santa Croce. Not in Pasadena. Have, uh, no, you're, you're thinking of Santa Cruz. Yeah, same place. What? It's it's uh, everything in Los Angeles is the same place. It's Are all the same thing. Me? Yeah, Pasadena, Glendale, it's a, it's a spra- it's a Anaheim, Paradise. How dare you? Uh, uh, yeah, it's all the same. It's all the same place. Uh, Nick Santa Croce, a, a different flavor for every day. Uh, Heidi Ho, neighborino. Uh, <laughs> but mo- most exciting is we have a second time guest on the show and longtime listener. Uh, he is related to one of us on the show. I'm going to let you guess who it is. <laughs> but this is Scott Wilson, no relation to Benjamin Scott Wilson. How's it going, Scott? Yeah, definitely Nick's dad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great story. Share a birthday Listen, with uh, it's with true. Nick, but if uh, you want to adopt me, I I will accept. <laughs> I'll take you right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I think uh, I think Nick's. Uh, parents have adopted me, and I think I've just been adopted by a lot of different parents and well, neglected the, the, hold, by my hold own. On, Matt, 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 the, 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 the paperwork is pending. Uh, I listen. You know, I I did. I I I adhered to the contract she sent. I put a photo of her in the guest bedroom so that it yeah, is official, fair. and that's how it's going to work on there. Yeah, Scott. When I when I was visiting, um, <laughs> Matt made up my room, and I walked in, and there was a framed photo of my mother. And our our pet Yorkie, Kiki Khaleesi, in a framed photo by the bedstand. That there is no limit to Matt's <laughs> generosity. <laughs> it's true. So it really isn't. So funny or creepiness funny. or creepiness. Yeah. <laughs> so funny update on that. Um, longtime listener Mark, uh, his wife uh, has uh, she just started with a new company and they have headquarters in Deerfield. Um, and she had to come down for a couple days of work. I'm like, just come and crash in the guest room. I did not remove the photo of Nick's mom from, from the guest room bedside, <laughs> and I did not also say anything to her, and she. She did not say anything to me when she left today. So I think there's probably like a couple of times she went to sleep the last two nights of like, I don't understand why this woman is, is on this. I don't know who this she probably just thinks it's a stock photo and you've been trying to fill that fill that frame for a while. To be fair, it's a very good photo. It's a it's very a good photo. it's a it's a professional looking photo. And even Kiki is like her mouth's open, her tongue's out. It looks like a, like a, a movie dog. I mean, and, and, and lest we uh, we bury the lead in who is responsible for this photo being in my house, it's someone that took a, it saw that photo once online and said this. I love it. And then printed said photo out, put it in a frame, and hit it in my house on Super Bowl Sunday uh, in a random <laughs> part of my bedroom. Uh, so right. yeah. Yeah, this that, is a that was a Beth special for that, sure. That was a that was a fun Super Bowl party. That was actually a pretty fun Super Bowl party. So speaking of fun parties, um, so we we do have uh, Scott here, and and Scott was not able to make it for Ben's um, debaucherous celebratory I, weekend. I, I kind of, I mean. I, at one point, it was like when I realized what it was evolving into. I was like, "Okay, family, you don't need to come." They're like, "Well, we're still thinking." No, don't come. Yeah. <laughs> I had that. I had that very same thought today. I was like, "I wonder if this was a calculated thing." No, ori- <laughs> originally, not there. Uh, th- no, I did invite the whole family, uh, but it ended up being something because, uh, especially with all my beer friends that were, came in from out of town, it would have ended up being kind of a 
I mean, everybody would have gotten along fa- famously, but it still would have sure. been a very strange crowd. I think Ben was a little worried that we were going to cramp Krampus style. For I, that, I, I, that, uh, that was not it at all. Uh, actually, no, I, I, I distinctly remember Ben saying, I want to invite my dad, but he, he can't hold a 30 minute conversation <laughs> about the differences between a farmhouse and a Saison. Yeah. And, it's uh, just, I'm not sure what to do. I'll be honest, Scott. It, what really came down to is we had a long talk about who can really pull off singing the cardigans. And there was a very small list of people. And, and just to let you know the caliber of what we were dealing with, I do have some audio from that evening. Um, and this was us doing really maybe the best rendition of uh, the cardigans that anyone's ever heard. But here we go. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Why do I sound like Fred Schneider? <laughs> and I beg. And I beg. Fool me, fool me. <laughs> Uh, by, by the way, I, 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 Dad, Dad, have you heard our thesis before? <laughs> that you could make any pop song better by just randomly inserting Fred Schneider repeating what the last person just said in the song. I mean, just think about like any song of the '80s, '90s, 2000s, nowadays. I mean, like you know, what's the most popular? You know, uh, Billie Eilish. You know, if it, 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 it was like. Well, and, you know, and, and hey, listen. There's don't, just don't no Athens, time to die. <laughs> don't Athens my Highland Park, Ben. <laughs> I think I, I, I will say, um, uh, looking back on the weekend when I had to peg the moment that I was like probably the most out of my mind, it was the sheer joy in singing a song I despise with, oh, with Ben Wilson. And we do have just a little bit of me singing. Ben a, Wilson, who can't sing right now, singing. Oh, listen, we were finally on equal playing ground for once, uh, and spot. this is flagpole sit up. Also, don't know the lyrics, even though I can see them on screen. <laughs> So, the the, the silliest part about this entire thing (laughs) is that Matt went on an Instagram rampage and just started posting random pictures from the weekend. And a co-worker of Nick and mine, Dylan, (laughs) saw the side of the frame of the TV with one word on it. And he said, (laughs) you singing flagpole, (laughs) Sita? That is super Dylan. That made me so happy, actually. That entire interaction was phenomenal. It's also, also, I I know it as the theme song of the Peep Show, though. If you maybe, maybe if you thought about it with a BBC uh, angle, uh, like my it. so I I go uh, farther back than that to when it was the OG song in a terrible movie called Des- or not Desperate Measures. Oh, oh God, it had, didn't have uh, like Josh Hartnett or something like that. It, it, it had it, it had a young James Marsden. James Marsden. And it had a young Katie Holmes and a young the faculty. The faculty. No, it's not the faculty. It's not the faculty. The irony is, I read it's, the book. It was based off of a young adult know. novel, and it's I had read called the... Disturbing, Disturbing Behavior. Behavior. Ah. Nick Stahl, James Marsden, I and saw Katie that, Holmes. I saw that movie in the theater. I did too, and I hated the song even more in the movie. Than I did. It was in the trailers, it. and it was in the movie. It was everywhere. Uh, but yeah, that was Man. that was some. <laughs> talk I haven't about thought about that in a while. A polarizing movie. <laughs> well, well, Matt, Matt oh has no! A flagpole sit on the fence about this. One. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> I, I, I just I just have to say that don't bury the what, lead. <laughs> what what you're you know what you're representing here is a reflection of you're now in middle age. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> These are uh, in, in fairness. I've been in middle age for the last decade. Yeah, I, I've really been leaning into it for a while. Who invited now. this guy? <laughs> yeah. a little Meanwhile, Nick was like perpetually twenty four, and then COVID hit. And now he's sixty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's, well, that's, I, I was about to say my, my moral dilemma was I have this new job that is paying me out the wazoo and they needed me in San Diego that that Sunday. So I was trying to figure out how to fly down here and then be in San Diego Sunday afternoon for a meeting. Whoa. And um, I wasn't making it work. So I was going, OK, I'd rather be with Ben. And then Ben said, Dad, you're you're off the hook. This is just going to be a smaller function. And, you know. Don't worry about it. You go to San Diego. So I go to San Diego and get COVID. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you learned a lesson. Wish I'd been with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow none of us none of us got COVID. Well, but Eric Olson, funny enough, got got COVID from like a work function that following Tuesday. I, I mean, it was, it was, it was, he was like, Hey, I, I got, I got COVID. I'm like from our trip. And he was like, no, like a couple of days later. Wow. Wait, that's so, amazing. Wait, so, so Scott, were you there for Comic-Con? Did I not recognize you? Cause you I was there or? during Comic-Con. I was in San Diego during Comic-Con. <laughs> no yes. No way. Yeah. But wow. we, were, we were staying you, a little north of the city, but you, you, um, if you, you saw someone dress up like the winter soldier, that was me. <laughs> I love that. Like a fun, like a, another, like entity was like, hey, you know what's a good weekend to schedule like a work event? <laughs> and and Comic Con weekend, Comic Con weekend. weekend, yeah, I'll be dead. That totally is crazy. Yeah, you, you, you can you can pull double duty, Dad. You can you know do your work during the middle of the day, and at night you can just go as Keaton Batman. Uh, <laughs> it was out, kind out. of the same thing because I was out there for an educational conference, so you know it was that or you know Comic Con, and you couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> the, the phrase, like, oh, you'll get an education real quick. <laughs> The phrase, at night. the phrase double duty dad sounds like a bad Schwarzenegger like sequel to kindergarten cop like oh next yeah. he's following up with double duty dad um but all right so uh scott because you're on uh on the show uh you've only been on the one time we have you again here we of course have to ask you a few questions that uh involve ben's childhood a little bit just to, yeah. to kind of understand so there was something that kind of popped in our heads last weekend we were ha- we had a discussion about family films and what constitutes a family film and what movies were Ben kind of looking forward to introducing to the girls. And I think that there's, I, I think that's something of a, a of a new advent kind of for our generation that were really raised like super pop culture minded. But I, I don't want to discount that. So I kind of want to ask you, were there movies that you were looking forward to potentially introducing Ben to or watching with Ben at some point when you were kind of raising him. Oh wow, yes. I mean, there are probably oh, dozens, but it was they they weren't. I wouldn't say they're family films. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's um, okay. That makes it even better. Uh, um, <laughs> no, I mean, he, the first movie we took him to was Ghostbusters, which I think remains formative. Um, yeah, f- very formative in his beyond life. formative. But, um, but you know, I'm I'm. All the presidents, men. I know. I made him watch yep. early. Paper on. chase. Uh, paper chase. Paper chase. And some. Um, some of my favorite. The films. Graduate. The Graduate. Breaker Morant. Um, just some great movies from back in the seventies. You know. So, yeah. I mean, I, I love film, and um, you know, we would we wouldn't hesitate to watch movies when we had a chance. But. Yeah. Like so. Basically, what would happen? Uh, some of the weekends, I would I'd be with my dad. Is we'd go to to blockbuster or the movie rental place and i would get to pick something out and um and in the morning i would get get up and eat breakfast and watch the movie before i woke up my dad because i would get up (laughs) stupidly early Mm -hmm. uh so so naturally he would you know i would pick a movie and he would pick a movie so i so i would watch one and uh, one that was my pick and one that was his pick so i would watch you know godzilla versus mothra and then i'd watch uh uh uh, a woman under the influence. Oh, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when he was six. When I was six. That uh, explains uh, a lot. That's that's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that. But no, oh joking. Joking aside, he did put, turn me on to some really good movies at a pretty young age. And honestly, like the, a movie like The Paper Chase is pretty appropriate for an eight or nine year old. I don't know many eight or nine year olds that would watch the paper chase, but I love that movie still. So, you know, I, I've, I've never, Mr. Hall, ever heard of that. that Take movie. this what, done. You are a son of a bitch. Yeah. 
<laughs> Kingsfield. It, it's it, that's really interesting. And also, and you bring up the Graduate, which was one that was one that my parents, um, you know, showed to me. And I and I think that is the one thing that is somewhat different in our generation uh, versus the generation before us. And that, like, the movies that we're excited to show the next generation, not that they're not important movies necessarily, but we're all, like, clamoring to show the kids, like, the Goonies. And, like, mm-hmm. we want to see what they think of the Goonies. And the Progenitors Force is like, do you think they'll like the Paper Chase or the Graduate? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think it's going to be, like, too boring for them? No, we're just going to show it. And, like, and I remember watching The Graduate with uh, my mom and being horribly embarrassed by the scene in the strip club which is also uh, unobjectively like hysterically funny and cringeworthy in itself it's supposed to be kind of cringy like it's supposed to be terrible but when was the last time that uh y'all saw the graduate pop quiz pop quiz uh about two or three years ago okay say within the last like five or ten yeah about five or ten for me i mean i i i I own i I own the criterion of it well, of course you do. I saw it for the first time, like, <laughs> maybe six years ago, believe it or not. Oh, my God. Um, wow. And it was the first time I had seen it. I, I, I had not grown up with it at all. Didn't know anything other than, like, the banging on the glass at the wedding and the underwater scene. That's literally the only... You would watch Wayne's World 2 17 times, <laughs> but you've never seen yeah. The Graduate. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's very true. Uh, but, like, I re- watching this now... I don't know if it, it, that's a film that ages that great. There is some weirdness it, in that film. Well, but that, that's it's intentional kind of weirdness. Creep. It's yeah. some Mike Nichols it's stuff. Huge yeah. creep, right? That, that, that's but, but, but then the, the last the last shot, the last shot for me, I was, I remember was watching the whole movie. I was like uncomfortable, but not in a good way. Like, a, huh, this didn't age. Everyone says this is amazing. I, I'm not quite getting it. And then the last scene in the bus is what kind of, it like, it really, I've never had an experience like this where, one shot and the ending completely tra- transformed my entire experience leading up to it. Like it all kind of came together for me in that one ending moment. I was not feeling it at I, all. You know what? I think that though, last scene. I, I think that's interesting. Like I think that's a very different because um, there's a couple of uh, TikTokers that do a really good job of like looking at older movies and discussing kind of what the what your mindset is going into it. So watching The Graduate now, you're carrying a lot of romantic comedy baggage yeah, with t- you. Yeah, a lot of it. So you're you're assuming this is like when Harry met Sally or whatever. Like you're expecting it to be this thing that is going to be this meet cute and you're supposed and, to be championing and- all of these characters when none of the characters in that yeah, movie they're all, they're are all kind of bad good. Ca- yeah, they're, other they're, than they're- maybe Elizabeth. Like Elizabeth's and, and the I'm, most pure. And I'm annoyingly woke. Yeah. <laughs> so, show me show me the graduate no nick if that is I'll not the predator if that is not the the byline on every one of your dating profiles right now it absolutely should be because that is chef's well, kiss perfect well i can't imagine i can't imagine having less luck on dating apps so i'll give it a shot i in speaking of of dating apps in the show by the way um uh some of my mm-hmm. uh friend group who were not uh privy to any of this information before listening to last week's podcast were uh very excited about nick being in the mcu and wanted <laughs> screenshots and trailer moments and i sent them everything. my dad my dad doesn't know about this they so were super she hulk, excited what say it again she hulk the, the the new upcoming show for for disney plus uh that that is uh marvel at the end of the first trailer it shows her sweeping through basically Marvel's version of Tender, and one of the pictures is Nick. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's Nick. It's a shirtless Nick, and he's a DJ. I was like, well, this is just perfect. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm Marvel canon. Yeah. He's Mar- now, he's Marvel canon. So he got to go as himself at Comic-Con. <laughs> I can't confirm that I'm in the series, but I'm definitely in the trailer. You're definitely um, in the trailer. You, you'll, you'll oh, that's awesome. Watch. The series She Hulk which is premiering <laughs> you, August. Wait, do you think? Do you think they're gonna Infinity War Hulk you? And they're like, be like, we just put him in the trailer to I throw people that. off, but we're gonna pull him out of there because the audience isn't well, ready for that yet. It's not well, part of his heart. They're, they're, Listen, they're, they're not you, ready I'll for you, the DJ. <laughs> we're not, you know, we're, we're not critical role or anything. So I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll give, I'll give you a new way exclusive. Right? Just, don't, just don't, just don't tell anybody. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a clear thing on the new way for sure. <laughs> uh, they they ended up uh, 
taking me out of the series because they want to introduce me as Batgirl? Stilt Man. Oh, Stilt sorry. Man. Sorry. And, oh, season two. Oh. <laughs> that, okay, listen. I, I imagine we are going to talk about that. I, so I was, I was going to. I've been thinking about this all <laughs> week, Matt. So I, I did want to. I did want to get into a little bit of that before we get into our topic. Um, and I'm not sure. We, we'll do it very briefly because I, I, I think we could spend a lot more time in this. But I, I did want to. While we, while we do have Scott here, I did want to ask him just two more questions. Uh, well, oh, I've got right, him right, here right, in the right. hot seat. You riled me up. I, I know. I didn't mean. No, to, I actually I, did not mean to do that. And I have to say, <laughs> Matt, that um, speaking of mottos, bylines, whatever, your the the t shirt theme for Ben for that weekend was pretty special. <laughs> Beth, too. That's a that's a Beth Finn Cannon Wilson special right there. <laughs> Uh, do, you want to, do you want to tell Scott the story, Matt, about? Uh, that, oh, there, yeah, there was a whole. That's from the trailer. There was a whole committee planning meeting about the shirt for for Ben's thing, and Nick and I, of course, immediately were like, "Let's blow this out of proportion," <laughs> and like, and make it. And Beth's like, and Beth just like Beth tried and true, just like, no, no, we're just going to keep this very specific, like, simple but theme then, going. But, but then I'm like, we're in the car, and I think Ryan's there, and my my mom called me, so I picked up, and she. <laughs> She was going on and on about about uh, she loved the shirts. Oh my gosh, it's so cute! It's so it's a cute shirt. It's a cute shirt over and over again. So I I you know Scott, I've got a good relationship with my mom, and <laughs> I decided like she clearly didn't understand. understand. No one no one beats it like this. <laughs> yeah, <Wait>. no one. <laughs> she didn't get it. I I, I I calmly explained to her that it was a a, a masturbation joke. <laughs> And Ryan in the front seat, I could see him start to react, Matt. But he I think turned he directly to me, like we're so we're 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 driving in the car, and the so for those of you in the audience that can't see, and a lot of you have seen the pictures, but the the shirt said "Nobody beats it like Ben," uh, meaning cancer, but also there's the double entendre with it. And so we're in the car, and Nick is on the phone. And at first, Ryan's not sure who he's talking to. And then I like, I'm like, oh no, that's it's his mom. He's like, oh okay, it's his mom. It's and the then, woman framed over his bed. <laughs> exactly. And so you hear Nick being like, yeah, yeah, it's a good shirt. I'm like wait, waiting for the response. Yeah, yeah. But like, do you get it right? And like the way for the eyes, he goes, "Mom, it's a masturbation joke." And Ryan just like, "What is happening right now? Like, why? Why is this? Why is this being spelled out?" I don't think I sounded out? that short with my mother. I, 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 I calmly. It was, you know, aggressive. Uh, Damn it, mom! It's a masturbation joke. Leave me alone. <laughs> I felt like I was, you know, I, I just didn't, I just wanted her to like, you know, what if she's at a party? I hate you, mom. What, what I, what I love in that, so I'm, I'm in the front seat driving and Ryan is in the passenger seat. And in my head, I'm hearing the other side of the conversation, which is Nick's mm. lovely mom laughing at this. And then I'm mm -hmm. also hearing what Ryan thinks is happening mm -hmm. on the other thing, which mm -hmm. to me is probably mm -hmm. the sound of Flick's mom <laughs> in A Christmas Story when she's like, <laughs> he said, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> starts just screaming in the background but uh yeah it was uh kind of amazing but uh, so, so very quickly scott i have two i have two very important my wife saw that you. shirt and went like father like son <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic well, listen, yeah. pl pl play your cards right and nobody beats it like scott might be your uh, birthday <laughs> present this year yeah, yeah actually that that could work as well um all right so so scott the the the, the first question is your your son this year is going to be turning 40 years old uh, no pressure but what wisdom what one piece of wisdom would you like to impart on him as he heads into this new decade of his life oh well I mean it's pretty easy I, huh. I would say <laughs> as a 65 year old um, every decade is better than the preceding decade huh. by f it, it's it's unbelievable how true that is so I mean I'm in my 60s and Every decade is better than the preceding decade. So, you know, you don't think you have a lot to look forward to. You got a lot to look for to forward to look forward to. <laughs> that's uh, that's fantastic. I, I I expect you maybe to be caught off guard by that, but you were ready for that question right away. I uh, no, I, he's told me that many times, many a time. Yeah. I'm I'm serious about the adoption thing though. Like you, you, you sold me. It was very comforting. I need that in my life. So so, so that was good. That that, that was except fun. for you, Nick. It doesn't apply. Yeah. So that that was yeah, good. I'm, 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 I'm the anomaly. <laughs> Very, very sound advice. But really, the important question that we need to ask right now is: 
what's George's record going to be this season? Are we are we seeing a are we seeing a title? What's going on here? Uh, we make it to the SEC championship game, maybe with a loss in there. I don't I don't know. I don't think I mean, so. I'm not seeing a loss, but Alabama will beat the living crap out of us. I think in the SEC championship game, I'm not sure we make it to hmm. the playoffs. Um, you know, we're going to be really good, but you know. Hell, we waited 41 freaking years for the last <laughs> one, and, you know, who cares if we have to wait a couple more years? I mean, we're still floating. I mean, As I, a Hurricanes I, fan, I, 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 am, I am I'm familiar drunk with that way. I, I am drunk on our last <laughs> national championship. I don't care. I mean, let's sound like the Ravens, honestly. No, no wonder there's a compatible fan base. Like, yeah. you get one every 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 fifteen and, and, years. I mean, we're going to be good, and we're going to be good, and it's going to be fun to cheer on the dogs. And but, it, but. it also was a really the the reason why also last year is super special to me is because my dad and I went to the first game of the season at Clemson, which was an ugly game, but it was a win, great against, win, and it was a, a and our de- the defense was great. And then we had an amazing drip where we took the beer bus to the uh, Orange Bowl, to the Orange Bowl, which was for the for the playoff semifinal. And that was a great, even though the national championship game was nine days later, that was a great capper. Those are the two games. I didn't make it a home game last season, but it was so much fun to go to those two games. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was it was for the national championship season. You just so have to it. know how my family hit. You know, we live and die with the dogs, and and so that's been forty one years of mostly dying, and uh, so you know. Yes. As I've said, uh, I mentioned earlier, and uh, and one of our listeners, uh, Casey, is probably going to be listening to this episode in a week. Um, but uh, very similar uh, track records of the of the Canes having a very dry '90s and then coming back um, uh, in the early 2000s for a national title, and then way back to some even drier than <laughs> they thought for the last you know 20 years or so. Uh, so I, I think that's that's kind of common for a lot of these these big teams to to have some of these yeah. big stretches. I want to pitch a, sh- a new podcast hosted hmm. by Ben Wilson on the 50 yard line. <laughs> He interviews celebrities between two hedges. Oh, uh, between the hedges, hedges. or or hedging your bets, and they base a bet on the ne- the upcoming game for the uh, for the season. Oh, Matt, too yeah. much. I flew too close to the sun. Yeah, I'm don't, sorry. Don't be a one upper. So sorry. Don't be All right. One-upper. So um, you know what? I'm, I I I hate to do this. Um, but I am going to hold us off on the HBO We're Max not discussion. Talk about that girl. I'm going to hold off on the HBO uh, Max discussion because it is. A, I think it's a large discussion to have, and I want to give it proper time. We, I, mean, I do want to get us on to our actual fair, topic but, tonight. But also, to, also to be fair, I am more prepared for that topic <laughs> than this one. Just so you know, that's that's fine. It's yeah. I, I listen. If, if, if those of you that are fans of the show that might not have heard what's going on. Study up on it because the next episode we are going to really dive into what is going on potentially with Discovery and HBO Max and the Batgirl movie amongst other properties. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot on of there. Uh, it's pretty and unreal. Scott, just for a quick context, there is a lot of craziness happen at HBO Max and and Discovery. Um, they are looks like going to be shutting on the whole streaming service right as they're about to premiere House of Dragon, the, the hotly contested game of thrones prequel it's it just it's but there's that's so a, many things that are in the balance that are just fascinating and that's to sort of a jobs, weird thing also passions. yeah well and i think that's also the big kind of the the part of this that is i think the least understood is that that so the the game of thrones series is hbo hbo which is completely separate from from, HBO, from the nice. streaming yeah. service so sure. like there there are and, certain and like, things that are like, super like, safe my, but my there are ones that are my, not and my, my good friend David Egan, who just edited Super Pets, I, I truly just saw last week. Everyone, go! Oh, you did. I, I recommend anybody if you're a fan of of DC Comics to definitely check it out. But if you have kids, it's it's a it's like a slam dunk fun family film that you're gonna enjoy and they're gonna enjoy and it won't Great feel voice like cast. you know kids film or like family film. Orange, <laughs> uh, family film for sure. I'm joking. For sure. Uh, but but yeah, he wasn't affected. You know, uh, Wag. Uh, which is ironically named considering the movie Warner Brothers Animation. Um, they aren't under, I think, the same guidelines as well. And he didn't get dragged into this, but I just, and we'll leave it at this, Matt. We can move on because it, it honestly is a good idea to hold off because a lot of things could happen between sure. now and, and the next time we have a podcast. So uh, that's fine. But I will say one thing the people who made Bad Girl, um, this was really 
people fans were looking forward to it not only to see Batgirl for really kind of the first time but Keaton's Batman was returning um there Brandon there were, Fraser were, villain yeah there was a lot of excitement and I don't know the filmmakers very well I don't think they've done a whole lot um I I, I don't they were very upset <laughs> yeah I wasn't familiar with, with the lead uh, Batgirl you know I, I I get the feeling that this was a lot of people's big break and it was something they worked you know for eight months on or whatever how long it was to, to imagine how hard it is first just to get that job to fight you know through pre-production and, and pitch decks and uh you know com- coming up with with you know a, a script and then getting greenlit and then making the movie for the most part and almost finishing it and then being told legally no one will ever be able to see your film ever it, it, it's not a sort of you know put it in the vault and maybe one day a zealous fan or somebody will find it and leak it no legally they will never be able to release that movie and the amount of people and 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 the man hours and the passion and apparently it wasn't very good but to think about having that ripped away you know you think that your your last battle is just going to be the reviews but at least you made it you put it out there you put your art out into the world and you were welcomed into the dc family and felt like you had a role in maybe yeah. bringing it back and boom just think you, you could have had, put it out in the world so that nick sancroach could say i could never been so obscenely <laughs> offended in my life <laughs> Listen, i can't i can't imagine like uh, well, what if, what if, like, uh, you know, they pulled She-Hulk? You know, actually, Disney Plus is going to merge into, no, you know, I'm, ABC streaming, I, and then I and it's like, you know, we're not going to release She-Hulk, and uh, Nick, you're no longer canon. I'm, I'm, you know, that would that would be crushing. I'm, I'm crushing. I'm just joking, but yeah. I mean, but you're not you're not entirely wrong. <laughs> there is there is an alternate universe where uh, this this doesn't happen, and then people just shit on Batgirl and and DC, and and it's like the next Morbius. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is, but it it, it, it it also is fishy that all of a sudden you have you know uh, woman led woman of color led film and this is where I, it happens. Let, let, let's it's actually fishy. have this conversation with the next. I, I think there are a lot of conspiracy things going on that are not involved with the actual yeah. content whatsoever. I'm not, and I'm there's not a lot that, of not, stuff. I'm not implying that. But let's it, get into it. That's well, we'll do it. Convenient. We're gonna so prepare yourselves for next week. It's gonna be all HBO Max. That's all we're gonna <laughs> talk about. Discovery HBO Max. But for right now, and I, and we're skipping over next week. We're also gonna cover the Alex Jones trial. I had a few things on here. There's a Roadhouse remake that I wanted to pull clips for. Oh, we're gonna get did to you, all of it. Did you hear did who else keys. was announced to be in the Roadhouse? No, Connor McGregor. <laughs> I'm oh not joking. God. This is literally playing, true. Is he playing what? the in prison? I fuck dude. Jake like you? Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal is going to be the new Brody. He's got to be playing. And the, Conor McGregor has got to be playing the asshole. Dude. He's going to be the new Jimmy. Oh no. Oh, we we got a whole episode next week that is going to be just Why? Roadhouse and HBO Max. I this cannot is a, wait. This a Roadhouse retrospective. I cannot wait. But but for right now, let's let's dive into our our. We're only just thirty, just a brief thirty two minutes into this episode. So we're, 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 we're halfway through, we're halfway through the episode. So I do want to get to our 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 topic, um, and I I want Scott to know as well that I did offer an audible topic. Uh, for tonight because because Scott has had so much work in the education system I thought it might be interesting to talk about movies about schooling or or school or education and that's for ben, next time and Ben well, you're, immediately you're, you're the said quarterback. no you're the quarterback you can't you can't propose the audible you're the quarterback I, of the ben, you ben, call the article Ben the Ben article. Ben is the listen no no I'm the I uh, Ben the soundboard Ben is the coach and what, he is the one that says at the end of the day what happens and what doesn't happen and he said but the no. quarterback listen, calls the audible <laughs> the coach doesn't call the audible here's the thing I, I think I think that We're deserves a return medical. visit with, with some preparation yeah, there, there you go yes I like. Exactly. I like this. So, so we want to discuss next uh, time. About the faculty. The faculty. So, finally, <laughs> I don't think my dad has ever seen the faculty. Oh, man, no, I, well, I haven't seen the. Faculty. I could spend an entire episode of the faculty. I really could. Well, it's such a great movie. To come to back, me. Scott. Prepare um, to come back. So, what we want to discuss for this week's podcast are movies that are polarizing, and it's kind of. I, I was very fascinated by like the, the faculty would be <laughs> if my dad watched it because we'd be all like, "This movie's great." My dad would be like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> 
I don't think that one's going to translate super yeah. great. It's no dead poet society, that's for sure. But um, it's like Stefan, no, this so, movie sorry, has sorry everything. to cut you off, Matt. No, no, that's okay. This movie has everything. All right, John tidbit, Stewart, by the way, by Matt. Manson. Tidbit, um, they yes. were going to film dead poets at my alma mater and the place from which I just retired, Baylor School. They were going to film dead poets there, but we had construction underway so they moved it to St. Andrews in, of Delaware. Uh, that's where they filmed that's Dead Poets. A bummer. That's a yeah. bummer. Would have been would have been cool. It's it is cool. very funny to me, and I, I mean this in no disrespect <laughs> whatsoever. Uh-oh. But whenever I hear Baylor, all and I don't remember what the actual school is that's used in scent of a woman. But when he like is always dismissively talking about the, he's like, Baird, oh, "You're a Baird man." Baird, no, they're Baird man. Baird man. Baird man. All I ever hear is Baylor now. <laughs> like, oh, he's a Baylor man. You're a Baird man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm glad you remember what the actual was on there. No, I would that's never great, gotten there. Absolutely great. Speech. It's another good education movie. Yeah. Well, and I am. No, I was about. the head of school, and I was nowhere like that prick. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good to know. Um, it's so, fun. It's fun seeing the Wilson boys cut it up, isn't it? I do. I, oh wait. Oh, just just uh, cracking on each other. <laughs> oh well, just <laughs> cracking on them. Just, just cracking up on it. Cracking up on it. Um, so uh, this is really an interesting topic, actually. From, from I had a bunch of movies in my head, and then as we all do, like we we will start to kind of Google lists and everything for I topics. I did not Google a list. So I Googled lists, and I was very surprised at what people categorized <laughs> as polarizing. So I want to I want to kind of like hit some things here before we dive into the conversation. So the web results were very much, it it, it seemed a lot of the movies fell into two categories. One was that they were just bad movies that you thought would be good. And they called that polarizing. So like like this showed up yeah, on multiple that lists, apply. which was uh, they they put Kingdom of the Crystal Skull on multiple lists. And I go, that movie is not it's polarizing. Ba- it's just a bad movie. It is a movie that people wanted to be good, and it turned out to be very bad. But there's no one out there right now championing the the yeah. the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which I think I, I think that's the biggest was- thing with polarized movies is that I'm sure there's some you need to have you need to have a a large group group of people that's equal to the other side that are saying we love what this movie did and the other side of the people being like we hate what this movie did now what what would you consider like a Rotten Tomatoes like 20% rotten critic score and like 85% fresh uh, uh, audience score or or the or or the exact converse of that I I you so you hit exactly on the on the second the, thing the that I found a lot Chuck of lists. Taylor of it. So I so I think there's one side of it that are just bad movies. I think there's another side of it that it gets very confused with cult movies and they and and which I don't disagree with sometimes that I think cult movies by nature can be polarizing. They're a a, a certain group of people really respond to them and the the rest of the you're, people you're, don't. You're talking, you're, like, uh, you're talking like you walk into a party and yeah. you poll everyone in the party do you like this movie? And fifty percent like it, and fifty yes. percent hate it. I, 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 I would, I would argue that I could walk into a party, look at somebody, and say that person would like a racer head, or that person is going to hate a racer head. So, so, so you and you and Ben, well, you're hitting on the on the third that one. That was, that was like when Ben and I were in a band. We always knew. Uh, who was going to come up and respond to which member of the band? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there, so that's the other side of polarizing, which is essentially, and I, and I, I, th- there's no easy way to make the statements I'm about to make without sounding like a completely pretentious asshole. But there are movies there that are not very easily understood. And oh, I literally an made asshole. a list. I mean, <laughs> I made a list of filmmakers. Uh, I'm gonna put Lars oh, von Trier. Not, not oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not gonna name a movie. Just, I'm not ma- naming movies. I'm just gonna give no, a no, list. no, 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 no. Hold. Filmmakers. Listen, <laughs> listen. Hey, I, I have a list of directors here. I, I have, I'm just telling you right now before you get into it. Yeah. I have a list of directors here listed out on in my notes app. That I was like, all of these directors make contra or make completely polarizing. I want to, I want to go one to one with you so, on this. So, 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 so say yes. it, and I'll say if it's on the list. All right, Lars von Trier on the list. Darren Aronofsky not on the list. Terrence Malick not on the list. David Lynch on the list. On the list. Yeah. Ooh, who do you have Steve that I Oden, don't have on there? Steve Odin. <laughs> That's a good one too. Ga- <laughs> Gasper No. 
Oh, you're going. You're getting. You're getting the Wachowskis. Yes, Wachowskis. A hundred percent. Yes. Uh, lost, maybe. Uh, I, I, I mean, you also have a. Uh, um. Oh gosh, guy who wrote Kids, who did like Gummo, Harmony, and, Harmony Corinne. Yes. Uh. Yeah. I, I. I. I prefer his work in Trash Humpers. But whatever. <laughs> there's a. I'm. I'm literally going to bring up a Harmony Corinne movie just for Nick to talk about. <laughs> like I literally have it marked on my list for Nick to to speak about. Yes, Ben, you are a hundred percent correct that there. There's that, and so I think there are movies, and we're going to get into some of these that are very heady, deep movies. And there are movies that, like, I have seen literally in our friend group, people come out of the same movie and be like, that was inexplicably terrible. So and someone else being like, that was a masterpiece. So when, when I first brought the, up the topic and then told my dad what we were going to be doing, he brought up a movie. And I want you to tell me what the movie was. Because the irony is it's a Best Picture winner, but I want you to tell me the the what your your experience was. Oh, I mean, it's a movie I love and have watched three or four times and would watch it again and again. Um and I've recommended it to several people who've called me after they've watched and went, what the hell were you talking about? <laughs> and Don't say Crash. Don't say Crash. Birdman. Oh, yeah. That yeah. showed up on a lot of lists, actually. And I'm... I'm I absolutely love that film, but a lot of my friends <laughs> don't. <laughs> yeah. So that, Scott, a good one. I, I love that you brought that up because that was the the other thing I had on, like, literally in my discussion points, which is which is kind of funny, is that I have, um, a, as we all have our own cultural biases and our bubbles for everything that we're consuming, I realize I do have a large one of those as well in pop culture, and that I saw Birdman show up on like. 10 different lists and it was a movie that never popped into my head because to me i never like disagreed with anyone in my circle about it like i didn't talk to anyone about it that wasn't into it and so i just it it never in my head amounted to being something that people didn't get on board with or really disliked or didn't get it was just like oh no i like we that, all that, kind of like this movie a lot. that's because you live in a pretentious film <laughs> <do>, nerd bubble <laughs> you're you are not wrong like and that and that also really opened my eyes a bit to kind of what is this discussion actually going to follow so i want to go around so i've been talking for a bit here so i want to i want to start let's go over to nick for a second here so nick what are some um films on your list that you really think about as being Polarizing, maybe it's something you love that a lot of people hate, or vice versa. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's not a, it's not a film. Um, it, it's it's a TV show, and it's actually a, a good opportunity to talk about it because we. I don't think we've ever brought this up in the podcast before, but uh, Damon Lindelof's Lost. <laughs> I knew I was about to say. I was like, is it Lost? <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, I hate you I, so much. And the thing is, while. while well, maybe I can pull something out of my ass as I give this opening. I so relate to what Scott just said because there's, <laughs> there, there's been, and if I was keeping it, you know, in my notes app, Ben, a track of every time this happened, I'd have a treasure trove. But I super relate to enthusiastically, um, you know, recommending, recommending a, a film yeah. and having someone come out and go like, "What?" And I think I think probably, I mean, probably the biggest one for me. The first thing that comes to mind is uh, every P.T. Anderson film ever made. <laughs> um, but Punch Drunk Love for me is yep. something that I really I, I, I wouldn't recommend it to everyone for sure. But I would you know, like curate at least five people I know I got to see this movie. And I would say the success rate was like, you know, I, I, I bad like 15 percent. And it's a movie that I've only talked to people, and no one says it's okay. That math doesn't, doesn't work out. <laughs> of course it didn't. I, 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 Scott I, I is an I, educator, I, Nick. Get your yeah, math I, correct. I I'm, I'm a liberal arts guy. You I, guys are... I, 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 I live in your world. God's sake. I, I talk like, the I, movies. I, I don't do your maths. All right, there, there ain't no math happening Nick's here. math is polarizing yeah. in itself, so let's not get uh, put, laid down in that. No, it, it, it's not polarizing. It's, it, it's incorrect. And I, I just... I put my... I willingly put myself in a prison of my own design there, putting myself in the position to come up with math. Uh, never did well with fractions. But back to Bunch Shrunk Club... I haven't met anyone ever who said, that's yeah, pretty good. No one, no one I've ever talked to about that is at that reaction. It is, they're on the same level and we'll talk about everything. We'll talk, we'll talk for 
30 minutes just about the Robert Smigel closet scene and not even get into anything else, <laughs> or they hate it. You know, it really is, to me, my in my experience, personally, the most polarizing film that I myself love. It, and it's no, not even close. That's a good one. No, and I and I and I also I will say on my on my short list of polarizing directors, he was very close to making oh, it on my list because yeah. of Punch Drunk Love and Magnolia. But then I think that uh, and actually, Licorice Pizza was and Master and Commander opinion. as well. Like yeah, I, I think P.T. Anderson is one of those Master that is, and Commander. Not Master and Commander. Uh, the, <laughs> the, master. the Master. The Master. Sorry. I'm like, sorry. I'm so sorry. Peter Weir's was Master and so Commander. Close. I got one of the words <laughs> right, <laughs> Ben, and one of the words not oh, involved. How does it feel? That, that, it, was, <laughs> no, it was a big jump when he went from punch, drunk, love to Master and Commander. <laughs> how does you remember, it feel, Matt? Why you, why you, you remember the famous quote from so Master and Commander? Uncaja. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. That was a that was a thing from uh, Master Commander. No, so uh, yeah, I think I think um, it's a hundred percent punch truck. Where, where, where Russell Crowe is on the boat, going shut, 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 <laughs> shut, shut, shut up, shut up. By the way, I would watch either of those casts redo both of those movies and be very satisfied. <laughs> Just gonna say that I take the 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 cast of Master and Commander and put them in Punch Truck Love and vice versa. I would watch both of those movies. Or or it would just it would just be. It would just Terrible. be him drinking a milkshake. It would just be <laughs> it Maximus be. drinking a milkshake. Um, so, so Ben, what like what pops up in your head kind of immediately for? Well, for me, the first things that, that popped up were, uh, I mean, I, I, movies I, that you like or movies that you hate. Well, well, so hmm. I, I actually That's kind of went. The first thing I went to was movies that were like just absolutely critically panned that nobody liked that mm -hmm. people came back or that, that, that created sort of, cause one of the things I thought, and I, this was one of the po personally polarizing movies to me, understandably. So just because I had a polarizing experience, almost watching it for the first time was what hot American summer, because <laughs> I feel like you have, you have people that are going to get it and they're going to kind of going to feel it. <laughs> and you're going to have people that aren't. And now, but the the one thing about that thing is, I think that repetition can can get people into the middle ground. Unlike something like Punch Drunk Love, the irony about Punch Drunk Love is, I love scenes in Punch Drunk Love. I just don't like the movie, uh, as a, as a as a kind of a whole unit. But um, so we're very polarized. But I was gonna say something along those lines, because uh, I feel like whatever the. Like if you go to the critical response of something like What High American Summer, it was just absolutely trash. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I, I've said this, but I probably said this before in the podcast. But that is famously my like third date movie. And you know, you don't have to, you don't have to love it, but you can't hate it because yeah. <laughs> you can't hate I it or it's over. Movie. <laughs> it's well, well, it's like it's it's not it's it's it, that movie is so close to me, and the sense of humor is so special to me that it's like. You aren't disliking the movie. You're disliking me, <laughs> really. So I think that is it's interesting. It's not what you like. <laughs> or not what you like. It's what you like. Yeah, like, and I think that that's always – that was really fascinating for me to kind of think about in this uh, in this topic is that, like, I, 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 I a lot of me kind of avoided some of the cult stuff just because I, I get – that there are people that are never going to really love Wet Hot American Summer. I don't think they're going to hate it necessarily. But like, like uh, my brother is not a a huge Wet Hot American Summer fan. He doesn't dislike it, but it's not the same. At like my brother and I will watch Super Troopers and laugh our asses well, off together. But my brother, like, he doesn't have that same affinity for wet hot well, and i think some of that's also uh, just the age gap but that, that was one one just one example and i assume sure. you're gonna kind of go around the room because yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. do have my kind of short dissertation on something in a little bit but mm. like matt what's like one of the ones that first popped up for you I, well, so the the ones that po the, there were two things that popped up immediately. We had ones were movies that were argued over greatly. So and I and I, and we've talked about most of these. So I'm not going to actually go into it. But uh, Ghostbusters 2016, The Last Jedi, um, those like were those were probably those the first are not polarizing films. They're objectively awful. <laughs> stop, stop it. Um, <clears throat> I, those are the first two things that popped in my head as just like textbook examples of things do it but then there was a whole other subset of movies that i uh, and it was interesting nick you asked a, a great question did you come at things uh from a side of you like it and you think that other people don't or vice versa and i think that's a really no. fascinating way to I, I, I think, look I think at this it is like 
I think it works better anecdotally. And that's what makes this topic harder to prepare for because the listicles didn't align with no. how I was, uh, you know, how I was taking this. And I tried to think about personal anecdotes about just talking about movies when I maybe thought I was bringing up something and expected a positive reaction and got a negative reaction or the opposite. Well, so and, and yeah, and I so I think there so there's a there's another subset that I didn't list out the front that, that popped up a lot on this as well, and I was and I was reticent to actually dive into these either because I don't know that this necessarily fits, but I want to bring it up as a discussion. So there are movies that are hugely popular, and there is a point at which a movie becomes so popular that detractors start to rise up to take it down from being so popular and it starts to muddy the history of whether or not that was a great movie as everyone remembers it or not so there were two movies that popped up in my head for that the number one on that was avatar i was about to say avatar like avatar to me is a movie that it was undeniably gigantically popular the number one movie in the world for many many years and it's I, the best 3D movie. But we, still. But, we, but we walked out of that movie and we were like, meh. <laughs> like, that was, and no, and that I, was our reaction. I, and I don't agree I, that I it's a, the best a, 3D movie either. I, I remember this in, in my mind's eye, I remember that as being a really positive 3D experience and nothing else. Like, nothing For else me, memorable. so I, right around the same time as that movie, maybe uh, two, two or three years before that movie, is a, a movie by one of uh, Ben's list of uh, controversial directors, which I think is a much better use of technology. <laughs> no, use of technology in 3D and all those things, which is Speed Racer. I think Speed Racer is Ooh, a yeah. movie that is built like a video game that I actually enjoy. And Avatar is a movie built like a video game that I feel like is a bunch of cutscenes I don't ever want to revisit. I don't, I don't remember any of the... There's nothing about that movie that stuck with me in any way that I want to revisit this. Every time I see the preview for the new one, I'm I feel dead inside. My my dad's nodding his head right now. <laughs> Great. Yeah, and like and so I think there are there are movies that become hugely popular and then all of a sudden have a backlash. Another one and, and this is a weird one. Titanic's to think about. one. Titanic uh, Forrest Gump is an interesting one as well that like I I grew up and Forrest Gump my family loved that. You talk about family movies. That was a huge family movie. Well, now for people us. be like it's problematic. Yeah, well not even problematic. They're just like it's it's overrated and overrated, it, 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 it wasn't it closer. wasn't as good as Pulp Fiction Pulp or Fiction. Shawshank Redemption or like and there's all of this like backlash that happens after it. But I, the summer I, that Matt, movie Matt, came out Matt. everyone loved that movie. Yeah. Yeah, them spent I, words. <laughs> Matt, did I send you the TikTok of the girl crying, thinking that she couldn't remember the name of this prison movie with Morgan Freeman? <laughs> yes. and, and she's just bawling, and, and you find out that she got Schindler's List instead. She thought Spielberg did Josh Bank, and like she's just bawling, crying. I got the wrong movie. She she was she had heard about she was remembering uh, Schind uh remembering Shawshank Redemption, but then she rented Schindler's List, and she was like. Where's Morgan Freeman? Like I don't understand. Where's the plucky? Why is this movie in black movie? and white? <laughs> but yeah, no, I, Matt. I got I got a new one for you. How about this? All right. What about a movie like uh, The Exorcist or a show like oh Ms. My. Marvel? When we're talking about polarizing mm. meaning, there was a whole subset of people that wouldn't see it because the Catholic Church, you know, uh, cut it off and it was rated X. You know what I mean? But the people that seemed to to see it seemed to like it, but people uh passionately hated that movie or or or, or something like but that they didn't see it like, i don't think i don't think it qualifies if you if you like refuse to see the movie I, then i don't think, I, and I, I think and I, it's just controversial Controver yeah, controversial yeah I, I think that i think it's a it's a little bit of a it, it's a subset of this category which is controversial movies which well, are I like think, things I like dog we'll, 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 we'll talk we'll talk about lars van Trier in a little bit yeah i think horror is a really good genre for this topic though Agreed. because even within the fanatic horror fan base a lot of times they are really torn out of what is horror and, it, and they they've seen the films maybe they have a bias i think that's like the best adaptation oh, of what i, I mean up, I, you know like I, I mean i totally think that right now one of the most polarizing directors out there is robert eggers because i'll say that the witches the be my favorite movie of the last 10 years which i think it is 
and Whoa. other people. Better than Ex Machina? And, uh, uh, mm. ooh, uh, that's really hard, actually. Ex Machina is right I was thinking, I was thinking I almost Machina. the exact I same thing. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but it's similar. You talk about Garland and Edgar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, 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 and, and, but both, yeah, and, and also both very, like, polarizing. That they, they, Their response, the, the, the typical response to that is, I remember Jenny Wicker saying, uh, we went to the lighthouse. It was the worst movie I've ever seen. Yeah, and I'm like, Jenny, the the lighthouse was not made for you. <laughs> when you when you this, so this could have been an A24 episode because so when you think wait. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an A24 film. Nick, when you when you asked me the question oh, oh, of like what were the first oh, like oh. or you, Ben, you said what was the first one that popped in my head? Honestly, the first thing that popped in my head was Jenny Wicker's review of the lighthouse <laughs> and Ben's <laughs> review of the lighthouse <laughs> happening like simultaneously for me and me like yeah, this is. <laughs> Yeah, I know yeah. which one of these two I'm following. <laughs> Dad, is, is there, can you? What, what are some of the other movies that you can particularly think of that, like, w- whether it was just the the one way or the other way, or where everybody said it was something that was awesome and you saw it and you were like, "This sucks." Now I'm well, scrolling Robin. through a few movies right now. Um, the one that the one from the old days that uh, rings a bell is being there with uh, Peter oh, Sellers. And well, not really good playing. movie, and really a phenomenal film, but it. You know, one of the best last shots in in a film ever in film history. Yeah, I mean, but um, but I was um, you're gonna have to help me because I'm getting old. <laughs> but um, what was the movie Tom Cruise did about the Vietnam vet? That oh, born uh, on the Fourth of, of July. July. Born on the Fourth of July was Oliver Stone. Extraordinary, but. It got hated by a lot of people. So. Well, of course, because it, it had an, an almost anti-American mess, or like, we don't take care, like, we're completely negligent of our veterans at the very end of the movie. It was very critical of American society. And, yeah, and uh, I, I don't know how critically, I don't remember how critically acclaimed it was, but it, it was pretty I, critically I, I acclaimed. It was pretty but the, but it was, but it was, a, it was public, talked about on the news the, a lot. The public as a did not necessarily like that movie. movie. That's yeah. a really good one, actually. I didn't even think about that. That, that one is, uh, is a particular. Well, and Scott, you also brought up a really interesting, like we talked about filmmakers that are polarizing, but there are also actors that are very polarizing. And Tom Cruise is, was on my list of probably one of the most polarizing actors out there because there is an undeniable talent and Inc- and dedication to the craft in this person, but also an undeniable amount of baggage that <laughs> is on fair. the other side that, of it. And that's not fair. If we're and, and I'll tell you how good it is. Uh, who is, um, gosh, American Beauty is one of my favorite. Kevin, Kevin Spacey. Spacey. Kevin Spacey. So there's another person who leaps to mind for me as a, extraordinary artist and somebody who's you know not a good person but yeah. um you know i love almost everything kevin spacey ever did so um yeah it's uh, but, have, but have you met have you met anyone that would say like michael jackson's music is objectively horrible you know like, like <laughs> yeah. we're getting into another conversation <laughs> yeah it's a completely different uh, conversation yeah. i think when you get into that yeah. problematic yeah. people you you're, know, you're opening up a whole new can yeah, of yeah. I, I, well I, I will say i will say in defense of well, my, I think my nick, I think nick, nick lobbed that one out there is with the tom cruise <laughs> in, thing. I, in in yeah in, in in deference to my to my my uh, thesis on this i do believe tom cruise even baggage aside is also just a controversial not controversial a polarizing presence he makes every on movie better and he makes every other actor better He's that, I, I did not expect those words to come out of your mouth at all i would have assumed you might have uh, been on no, the I, other side of the of the the cruise argument but because no, I, again I, again like it's separate separating the art sure from the artist and that's not but there are also people that don't like so so back like this is what kind but of there like, are people, maybe, but maybe see, think about is, it so, so when when look, he was doing this born is a on, argument. when he was doing born on the fourth of july it was... Eyes wide shut too, guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that and that that that's actually is on my list. How about how about Nick Cage? If we're talking about polarizing actors, that feels more like he doesn't have baggage. He's got kind of a fifty-fifty. You know, <laughs> he's polarized against rate. himself. <laughs> yeah, right. And and like I think that some people, if you've seen, you know, if you're on the wrong side of the road of Nick Cage films, you, you think he's a hack. I'm, and if you're on, you know, the Ghost Rider side, you think he's a genius. I'm, 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 pr- I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure he was in a direct-to-DVD film called Polarizing. 
<laughs> Are you serious? No way. God, no. Stop it. No, all right. So we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get back on here. So yeah. So so it's funny, Nick. Uh, the 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 movie that popped into my head also very at the top of my uh, list of polarizing movies was by a director that uh, that uh, Ben brought up earlier, Harmony Korine, which was Spring Breakers. Uh, which has always been a movie for whatever reason I associate with you. Because I, 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 I've never... How, how could you? I've never seen the movie. What? I think you're the what? only you one... I think it? you're really? the only one I know that's... I didn't know you saw it either. No, I, I saw I Spring saw Breakers. It, uh, I saw it in theaters. Yeah. With 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 rain, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. And it was like opening night. I, I don't, That's I mean, some crowd. Is, and what it, what it really comes down to is, I went I went on a, a date once where we watched two movies back to back, and and she invited me back to her place, and she made this like delicious dinner, and then we we're gonna watch, you know, we we're gonna watch some movies. Trash this humpers. Would be, this would be great. And it was it was <laughs> Human Centipede followed Ooh. by Trash Humpers. Follow. Do you, I mean, back to back. Do you not, <laughs> imme- do you not immediately more like, more extricate like yourself back from to that mouth? <laughs> yeah. Did you get the hell out of there? Yeah, are those not flags to you, Nick, to get out? Well, honestly, oh my God, you made it through both of them? Yeah. <laughs> Nick, that's not back to back. That's ass to ass. <laughs> God, I I hate. I don't mean That's to sound scary. terrible. I hope Under, she was very oh, attractive. Yeah. No, <laughs> oh my God, no, that would she, be even scarier. She she is and, and remains cool. Probably too cool. That was the problem. She oh. thought she could like that would be nothing. She she was trying she was trying to be edgy on, on the for the sake of edgy just to show level. you she could handle. I don't it. know. I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed Human Centipede, and and <laughs> oh, truly. I did, and then I was like, "Oh, this is it's just great, you know." And then I figured, no, no straight to trash on person. That was the only mistake. I, I think if, if we had spread, if we had spread out trash humpers and 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 human centipede, we'd probably be married over but two days because it was it was the you know back to back is what because the thing is trash humpers. <laughs> Scott, let me let me explain oh, the, no. the, the the premise of, of, of Harmony Corinne's trash humpers. Uh, and just get ready to come back for an anniversary show highlight reel. You want to get oh. the time code, Matt, for right now. Harmony Corinne did this avant-garde art piece. That's like an, an hour and 45 minutes of people in plastic human masks. So is this like uncanny valley, very creepy humans playing humans without a word of dialogue um, from the actors who would interact with people on the street in this documentary style, but would do these disturb. I don't want to get too into it, but do these disturbing <laughs> things. Um, and I, I, I honestly, I don't, th- I don't think they humped trash once in the entire film. It's like way worse than that. They buried the lead with the name Trash Humpers. I don't even think it happens in the film. But it's like an art piece. It's something that maybe you walk into a modern art museum and yeah. you're, you walk into a darkened room for thirty seconds. You're like ah, I'm uncomfortable. I'm going to leave. But it's like an hour and forty five minutes. That's trash humpers. That was the G-rated trash humper for me. Uh, the G-rated trash humper. <laughs> well, it's at, not. And, and it's it, it is very funny, kind of also of looking into these movies because they're there and they're ones. They're Don't look ones for too long. We that we haven't. Uh, that I'm I, like haven't gotten hugely into because what what's funny is that um, inherent in adaptations are things that are polarizing. So if you're adapting a comic book or a book or whatever it is, I feel a lot of those things are, they carry a lot of polarizing baggage with them of people that are going to like it or dislike it based on how slavish it is to the book, how not slavish it is to the book, right, how exactly. accurate. So you have things like, you like, know, on my list, Watchmen w- was on there. Um, the Hobbit. Well, that's a good one. Um, like good one. The, the whole Hobbit trilogy. Not the um, Rankin Bass, because everyone No, no, that. not Rankin Bass and not Lord of the Rings, but specifically The Hobbit, which I feel was much more... I enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, it. ...difficultly received uh, oh, you know, by the people. The thing is, I, I, you know, I never read... The- the, the Fellowship of the Rings, but I did read The Hobbit and loved it as a child. So uh, I quite enjoyed that that movie. I thought it was I thought it was good. He liked the first movie. Is what I, he's saying? No, yeah, I, no, I yeah. think. It, I but I also. I, we, oh yeah, the Desolation of Smog <laughs> is the second one, right? I I mean that's my. Right. I think the end of Desolation of Smog is is the last like forty five minutes of that movie are my one of my favorite things in all of the Tolkien. I liked uh, it. Adaptations, I, I, I liked but, that. 
No, I, I think it's. It, I, I think it the was Hobbit difficult. Is a little more like ADD than than like the fellowship. It's you a know? They, kid they get story. The, like yeah, I, I think that's yeah. a, a lot of people forget that like the Hobbit is what is supposed to like bridge you over to reading yeah, the headier you know, Lord of the Rings. Well, the Hobbit was a kid's book, but we and did the Lord the, of the Rings. Was, we did them in reverse adults. in the movie world, and people were expecting it to be Lord of the Rings, and no, it, it's more. It's it's like. It's like expecting and Empire then, Strikes Back, but you get Return of the Jedi. And, but but then but then Battle of Five Armies comes out and like oh no, all of a sudden we're trying to do Lord of the Rings again after we've they established all these characters. Correct, yeah, right. it's, like, it's super uneven. It's like expecting the Ewok adventure and getting the Christmas special. <laughs> no, I love it, that. It's Ewok like adventure. expecting the Ewok adventure and getting the Battle of Endor. So there. <laughs> It, so it's funny. So you you brought up um, Wet Hot American Summer, and I think comedies hold a kind of a special place in the in this polarizing area of like, it, it, sense Green of humor, humor is very subjective. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like so so, and there are movies that like showed up in, in like things that I was thinking about, and they showed up on listed well that are very polarizing comedies. Things like Step Brothers, I think, is a very mm-hmm. polarizing comedy that like. The, and I remember even the first time I watched it, it felt like anti comedy to me. Like I, I felt like I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting what's was. happening there. And that, and I think that's a there's a common thread of things like. Wet Hot American Summer and Step Brothers and something like Napoleon Dynamite. Well, you, um, you recommended like you recommended the rehearsal last episode. Nathan Fielder's the rehearsal. Yeah. Which, by the way, are you caught up? I have not. My, I have not caught up. I have got. My I, goodness, Matt! As it's soon as you so watch cringe. It, I can no, like. No. I literally can I, only I, take an episode every listen, couple of no, weeks. Listen, it, it is. It is turned. It is turned a corner. Oh it's no! Almost an entirely different show. It's, oh it's, no! It's cringe. But 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 you know to the point. Nathan Fielder and Stella Comedy and Wet Hot American Summer and 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 the state to a large extent. Uh, yeah, um, I think I think you should leave. I think yeah, you should leave for sure. That that specific brand of cringe, uncomfortable comedy, you know, I think is the definition of, of, of polarizing. And I, I now now I, it comes coming back to me, Scott. I have. I have recommended this show, this sketch comedy show, I think you should leave to anyone within a, a five meter <laughs> radius of me for the past two years. And my success rate is not very good, but the people that do love it, I text every few days, will text a quote, you know, a punchline from that show, and it's become an obsession. Um, comedy and I think horror really lend to the true definition of what is polarizing. Someone who will watch it and will give it a chance and who likes comedies or likes horror films but will not like and and, you know, the, and the irony is the, the, these can be people of of the same of a relatively same ilk you know yeah, who are well yeah. well versed in That's film and That's filmmaking and re- really do understand like what it takes to actually make something and, and what it is to understand craft and they'll h- h- love it or hate it, and I, so I do think that that's a really good point. So I, so I want to HBO Max, which is not care about which crap. is going to lead me into my point. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right so that, Ben, I want to I want to start with your dissertation on here as well. But then I, I what I want to close out this uh, so you guys can all kind of be thinking about it as we go through this. I think each have to of us got the green jacket. Everyone who who comes to the show twice gets the green jacket. <laughs> God damn it, Nick! I didn't get the green jacket yeah. out. Uh, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't even have to win the Masters. Well, Nick returned I'm his so his Hugh Hefner robe that was going to be what we would give guests that came here multiple times, but that was returned to Coles and it's yeah. gone and, now. Any, any, anyone who's listening right now, uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't buy any like theme like like snuggies or or no. or, uh, or robes from Amazon because someone could have bought that purely to go to a uh, endless mimosa brunch in Delray Beach. And it was hot. It, and it was very yeah. sweaty. Hypothetically. Very sweaty. <laughs> yeah, hypothetically. I don't know anyone who's ever done that. We but sweated if someone a were lot. Doing it, that thing was it's moist. It's probably pretty gross. Probably um, pretty gross. So while, while Ben, uh, while ben gets into- I got my money back and a $10 coal <laughs> cash card. <laughs> while Ben- Well, I got your $5 coal's cash. But uh, while Ben uh, does this thing, I want everyone in here right now for our closing to think about a specific property that you love- that you feel that uh, there are an equal amount of people that dislike that property. Mm-hmm. So something you want to defend on your list. So, uh, but before that, Ben, let's get to you. I want to hear your your dissertation. Well, so no, I was going to say I, I think that the modern uh, and I really super, really do agree with you, Nick. That those those genres really breed uh, a, a total kind of dichotomy of you love it, you hate it. You know, and there's sometimes very little middle ground. Um, I think that the one person I wanted to bring up is Zack Snyder. 
uh, very briefly, but not that's not who the dissertation's about. Zack Snyder is. Uh, it's so interesting how it's just turned into this like very like weirdly tribal camp where it's just like there is no because the thing is is I think that Zack Snyder is a really good filmmaker. I don't think he makes really gr- good. I think he's a really good filmmaker who doesn't always make great movies. I think that he's a super talented filmmaker. I think that the the Dawn of the Dead remake is fucking phenomenal. I love I Watchmen, agree. and I, I and I really love Watchmen. I don't I even, th- don't and I don't think that 300 is a bad movie. I think it's a stylized, you know, yeah. it, it is what it is. For, for me, it's Dawn of the Dead and 300, and I'm not really, I don't really like anything else he's done. Well, but but uh, but 300 is is 300, and I think it's a it's a good representation of of. Uh, uh, but he's done some some objectively, I think, awful stuff as well. 300 uh, is more like 50, suck, 50 sucker right? sucker punch, uh, especially. Um, but like, I, re- I actually really enjoyed the Snyder cut. Like I, I enjoyed the Snyder cut way more than, than I, than I thought I was going to. Uh, so anyways, I, I think he's a talented filmmaker that, that has now had this weird, uh, fan culture polarizing, which, which is where the, the, it's the fan culture. It's it, that his sort of forcibly extricated people into two camps. The interesting, the thing I had that the kind of the dissertation on is the Wachowskis. So the Wachowskis made Bound, which was a universally loved film, critically acclaimed. Then they made The Matrix, and The Matrix was universally acclaimed. Every single film they have made since then has been pretty much you love it or you hate it. Like, critically, and I'm not talking about, like, critics love it and people hate it or people love it and critics hate it. It's like half the critics say, this is a great movie. Half of the critics say it's a terrible movie, and it's the exact same way with the audience. I'm talking about the Matrix mm-hmm. sequels. I'm yep. talking about Cloud Atlas. I'm talking about Speed Racer. Now, Speed Racer was more critically derided than most of their other films. But I would also say that the fan contingent of that movie also kind of got bigger faster than some of some of their other films. Um, but yeah, Cloud Atlas, all the way up into... Uh, the most recent Matrix movie, which is one of the most recently polarizing movies I've ever seen. And I understand why. I, it, because it's like some people are like, this is ruining my childhood. And other people are like, oh, actually, this is recontextualizing my childhood. <laughs> so um, I, I, I think that it's really interesting that they have such a controversial filmography basically kind of throughout. Um, yeah, and I and, and I, I think they I, to me I think they've made one bad movie, just one out of it, which is Jupiter Ascending, which I sure. think Jupiter is Ascending a, is, a, is a bad movie, a pretty terrible movie. But I I a hundred percent agree that everything but from the I, Matrix. But sequels, ironically, Jupiter Ascending is m- like mentioned incessantly in like John Green books, where all of these teenagers talk about how awesome Jupiter Ascending is. I mean, like the, there was this, there was a small fan, like a pretty vocal sure. fan culture around Jupiter Ascending that loved Fucking that movie. Teenagers, am I right? Which is weird. No, uh, I, so no. I, so I don't, I don't, it, and this is a, an entirely different discussion for a whole other episode. But I think you hit on a really, really fascinating thing, and 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 I don't even know that we can actually do it as a topic because it's very hard to get to the heart of. But there is this idea that filmmakers are aping things that they grew up on or they idolized when they were younger and there's a generation of people coming along that have not seen the thing so the the people that love jupiter ascending have never seen a terry gilliam movie they've never seen brazil they've never sure. seen things and all the things that they are responding to that they like in jupiter ascending which are, there are, are parts that are good yeah they, they are coming from other areas i think it's similar for something like avatar if you've never seen a james cameron movie before avatar probably hits a lot harder for you because you're Especially not comparing if you've never seen, it if you've never seen fern gully before <laughs> yeah like if you if if this is a new idea to you if, and if you're if you're an inhuman monster and haven't seen no fern it's gully, no yeah. stop it, uh, listen i think because we we're biased to that as well the, the i mean we watched star wars and indiana jones we, we watched star wars and indiana jones and we never watched those saturday morning serials that like that that basically spawned all of those things to us it was like this was brand new 
information being brought to us, but it wasn't. Like everyone's always aping other stuff. Like, so I like don't, Kate Bush and Stranger Things. <laughs> like and that, and that doesn't bother me. Like that, like I think there's a gatekeeping that happens with a lot of this stuff. It's so silly to be like, mm -hmm. listen, if somebody watches Jupiter Ascending and it spurs them to make a really great piece of art. Who's losing in that? Like, there, there's no, or, there's no or loser. Just, or, or if it just makes someone's day a little nicer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Scott, do you have, do you have uh, something on your list that's kind of uh, the one that you feel that you're in a, a group of people that really like this thing, and there are other people that are trying to detract you from liking that thing? Mm. No. Well, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't. Not the Georgia I, I, Bulldogs. I don't fall over backwards for Tarantino films. I mean, I'm. I was going to say I, Kill I, Bill. I, I think some of them are really good and entertaining and absolutely cool, and I think some others are boring as hell, and I don't, I don't get it. You know, I mean, so Tarantino is the contemporary director that I find, you know, not everything yeah. he puts out is. It was uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, right? Is you were like, yeah. I mean, I, I was dying to watch that and watch it recently, and went, really? What the hell? I mean, it took me three here. days to watch it, Same and um, I mean, I it, I went to sleep th twice. You know, <laughs> it might have been the COVID, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that I was too shy. Yeah, I was trying to think of uh, some somebody more. From Quentin my Tarantino gave my dad COVID. That's, that's yeah. the quote yeah. on the movie that's, poster. That's, yeah. Tarantino would put that on there. Like, might have right. been the COVID, but I thought it was boring. Yeah. Well, I mean, can I mean, you get it, COVID from toes? It, it took me a while to to uh, to get into that film, and I mean, some of it was absolutely wonderful and others and i just i don't know but the, i was trying to think of some somebody from my generation that um that kind of struck the same uh chord and that was peter bogdanovich who the last picture show yeah i i you know is one of the great movies of you know 50 sure. years maybe and then he did some stuff that was just so forgettable it was unbelievable so uh, he would be from back in my day. Sure, somebody who would fall in that light. Well, that, yeah. and that's always tricky to to like really get into a film. I mean, if, if, like a great example, kind of like in, in this sort of modern generation, is somebody like M Night Shyamalan. Uh, you you would, just read my mind because yeah, you know, but both of you guys are stepping on my hand. My <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say signs. Yeah, and Kill Bill. Why about and, and but now I want to switch to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Scott. Hmm. Like I think that is, like, I, I searched the internet trying to find that and didn't. It came up empty until, until Ben just spurred it for me because, it, it's also rare for me. You talk about being that bubble mat where like most of your friends are going to like the same movies that you like and maybe you don't experience that. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a recent example of something that was you know Oscar nominated, largely lauded by the critics. And Oscar my own winning. bubble, yeah, my, my own bubble, I was the minority. I hated that movie, and the majority of my friends really liked it. And it all came down to the ending. And and I think that that's another great point when you talk about, like, polarizing. A movie could be really good and, and lose somebody in the last, you know, yeah. five minutes. And then, and then that is, in essence, what makes it polarizing. And the decision to rewrite history and have everyone escape the Manson clan and turn it into it. Like, I understood, you know, I, I get it. I, I, I get what he was going for. It did not work for me. It worked well, better it, in Inglorious Bastards. Uh, that's what I told yeah. my dad. Is, is it, less it works, effective for it, wor it works better in Glorious Bastards because it was the first time he did it. It's a revisionist yeah. history and, like, wish fulfillment, adult wish fulfillment for the first time. And then you but see like, it, it was, happen again. And it's like, you haven't you already played this trick before? And it's wish fulfillment, but like in a for me really unsatisfying sure. way. You know, to me the ending is really um, the the real life ending, so much more compelling. Um, that if it had ended that way, the real way, I, I honestly feel like I probably would have loved that movie. Um, to go back to Shyamalan, you know, Unbreakable is a film that's that spurred sequels, and I think Love there are plenty of people that like it. I, no, okay, see, that movie, I uh, like a lot of Shyamalan films, it got to the point where, okay, now my thing is a, a last-minute third-act twist, and I, I have to do it. 
And most of the movies, for him, signs included, I am on board until that twist comes around. And for me, the twist in Unbreakable, I thought was great. I thought, oh my God, he's going to break the streak, right? He's, he's going to make a sixth sense again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on board. And then right as I feel like the end is unfolding, and he's gonna tie it up in this satisfying way. It cuts to it cuts to like a, a breakfast <laughs> a club. title card. <laughs> title card. Like a title card. Like Shane Jackson ended up doing this, and, and Bruce Willis ended up doing this, and uh, they ra- they they ran out of money. <laughs> they did, and they tried to get back there. But yeah, that's a that's a great. It's a really but interesting still, example to pull but for from. Some people, for some people, that was you know they didn't have to you didn't have to show it. You have to show it. I love how they you know they wrapped they wrapped it up. I it and comment. I I am that person. I so, I see, that I way is get one on of my favorite movies ever. That. I feel like that is just absolutely maddening way to end 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 a film. Not the twist, but you know, and who knows what the story is behind it. But also, Matt, while we're on air, just to keep you honest, oh, I want to put a pin in this. We're going to talk about Batgirl, and we're going to talk about Bruce Willis next episode. I have thoughts. Bruce Willis read, is going to play Batgirl? I read an, I read an incredible <laughs> article about, about Bruce Willis's, like, you know, he made his career as a you know, fast-talking right, we'll put it, we'll, Harry Grant. Right, we'll put, it, we'll and, put the pin on the, on the Bruce Willis one here. Well, I was setting. I was just setting it up. I'm not going to get into the conversation, Matt. He went from a t- fast talker to a man of action of, of little words because of the medical condition he's going through. And I think that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Read, a, read a great article about it. We will get to that. Uh, ben, what is on your list for uh, something you're maybe more into or you're on the side of people that are into that are people that are not into Didn't he that. already go? We're going around in circles? Yeah, I, I, oh, I, did think, you? I think I already went. Oh, I thought, well, you talked about the Wachowskis. You but were I thought so you were preoccupied actually... with cutting no, off my Bruce Willis. No, he, he had a he had a, a dissertation that was cut with Chowskis, but then we were going to actually do a thing. But I, well, but I, if I was going to talk about the thing, yeah. it was probably going to be. I mean, uh, a lot of, enough people like Speed Racer that it's not a big big deal. But uh, there are still people that think that Speed Racer was like this movie that was entirely made for kids that is terrible. And uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a fucking piece of art. It's so pretty and so interesting Dang. and so well Very made. Very great to look at. And it, I gotta it, see that movie. And it's so it, uh, the Blu-ray transfer. Of that I, movie yeah, is I own just, that Blu-ray. It's is phenomenal. so phenomenal. And it it really does in capture this anime spirit that no other film really has. And I and it was funny. Not I even was... Scarlett Johansson's Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> I had very little interest in that movie, but I remember I was at the drive-in in Lake Worth watching Iron Man, uh, the the first Iron Man movie at the drive-in, and Speed Racer was playing on another screen, and Ben had talked to me like the week before. It was first when I, I barely knew, well, I knew you decently at that point, but like, we know each other for a few months. And you were like, Speed Racer is fucking like crazy good. <laughs> and so I was like half watching these like images from Speed Racer while I'm also watching Iron Man, which I'd never seen before. And it was uh, a whole experience, but it, it was crazy. But um, th- there was a movie that popped into my head for sure on the polarizing scale. Um, because I really do feel that this is a, a movie that I am very passionately into. I believe, Ben, you are also a, a fan of this movie, but there are a lot of people that are detractors, which is AI, artificial intelligence. Hate that movie. Big fan. Uh, Steven, <laughs> thank you, Nick. Uh, like, Steven like Spielberg okay. like uh, directed with a lot of um, a Stanley Kubrick DNA in it. It was something he kind of took over from Kubrick. The ending is very polarizing. Yeah, the ending's polarizing. I think that's what it is. Um, and and I love the ending. Also, it, it was one of the first times I got out of a movie, and there were people that were really they were like, "Oh, Spielberg can't help himself. He can only do saccharin." And I'm like. The whole movie sets up Pinocchio. Like from from the first act, there's this Pinocchio. I want to be a real, real like, boy. Thing. I want to like be like this this whole thing. And the end of the movie literally ends with a Pinocchio moment, and people are like, "Oh, Spielberg just has to always have a happy ending." I'm like, "No, the whole movie was building to." He should have just stuck this. with this. <laughs> well, and like, and the, it, it is one of those movies legitimately. That if you shut it off before the, and I won't even call it a third act, it's more of like an epilogue, you can turn that movie off at, at a certain point, and there is a huge group of people that think it's the greatest thing that has ever existed, but this little epilogue that, that happens after this certain moment is what drives people crazy to argue over, and I always think that's I, kind of interesting in movies. I worked at, uh, at 
the center theater in in Baltimore during a like radio promotion screening of that, like a, a, a advance screening for people that won the call in uh, oh boy. contest. And John Waters was there. Oh my god! And so I'm like at concessions, and I remember watching about half the audience walk out halfway through. And one, I I believe John Waters came up. He bought a Fiji water, and he's like, "This sucks." And then when I <laughs> walked out, but um, I'm not blowing up John <laughs> oh, Waters. Oh no! Uh, he was not a fan. He's not a fan. I, I think I think he he liked it better when Jude Law was showing a a, a small child around the red light district in in electronic <laughs> feature. Uh, but yeah, it, I, I I watched AI and I, I like AI, but I but I'm in the middle ground, so it's not a super. I guess polarizing thing for me personally. Yeah, it, it's, it's worth one a watch. Of those, it's worth a watch. I like it was one of those movies that hit at a very specific time for me where I was really starting kind of like film education. So I was also starting to talk to a lot of people that were very opinionated about movies, which was not part of my world really before that. Like I like I would I would talk movies with my brother and and my mom and some of my friends, but like we weren't debating a lot of stuff. So it was one of the first times I watched like this big movie with a big director attached to it with another big director that's also got DNA in it. And I got out of it and I was like, I love everything about this. And there are people like, oh, it's trash. Like this isn't Kubrick. This is like bad Spielberg, like masking all the Kubrick. And I was like, it blew my mind. <laughs> like like that, that was sort of where polarizing movies were born for me of like, there are these people that came out of it that were just like, everything you feel about this movie is wrong. <laughs> and I was like, I don't feel that way. That's crazy to me. Hey, Matt. Yeah, I got yeah. you. I'm kind of surprised we've gone the evening without talking about any Woody Allen movies. Ooh, um, that's actually, that's that's actually kind of... That's a good one. That's, um, that's a good point. Because you talk about somebody who whose movies were, you know... Either well, I well loved or not loved. But he yeah. also had plenty of polarizing movies, too. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm he talking hits about. Bo- he hits on he, both he sides hits, of it. He, he hits the spacey and and the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Per, like, he personal both, side and he has yeah. 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 both problematic and polarizing. Yeah, and yeah like, I, I don't think that anybody's gonna go um, out of their way like no nobody no educated film person is gonna say that like Sleeper or educated. Manhattan or or Annie Hall or Hannah and her sisters are terrible movies. They're I'm not mostly, gonna say I mostly love his films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for the most part, but he's got some bad ones. I mean, yeah. crimes and misdemeanors is not. Uh, I mean, but they're also. I there are so it, he definitely falls into. I think kind of that uh, cult is not the right Hollywood the ending right is thing. one of the worst fucking movies I've ever seen. <laughs> Pardon my French, but it is yeah. terrible. <laughs> well, and it's like and I. I don't think that like he falls into like cult type of of polarization but there is an idea that the like a woody allen movie is a very it's specific a woody allen feel movie. and yeah. and it's very recognizable it's like the same as like a mel brooks movie like and you're either on board with that or you're not and that can make a movie be split right down the middle and be like i don't like this type of humor or this type of voice and i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna not enjoy this so, yeah i mean like you could like you know like the naked gun and airplane or you're and you're an asshole <laughs> that's a great way to end this podcast right there <laughs> um uh, yeah i think that i think that'll tie it up for us um uh, real, real quick before we, uh, so bad girl uh, just for, just <laughs> okay. End the show. I'm not show. talking End about that. All right, so Bruce Willis. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back. I'm back. So I read this great by, by the way, I, th- I think in the last episode, somebody said, uh, live easy or die hard. And I'm like, it, that, that's what Bruce Willis is doing right now. It's just, oh. you know, that's oh. that's the next one. Ben. Oh. Ben. Oh. What a we polarizing sentiment to end this episode on. <laughs> He's How retired, you, man. Polarizing. Oh. Oh. He's dying. <laughs> and so that's it for the New Wave podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, and uh, coming at you from Los Angeles. I want to thank you so much for listening. Boynton Beach. So Cheers. much for cancer giving you I, empathy. Oh, <laughs> oh good for you. <laughs> Well, uh, Scooby Doo Bop, Baba Doo Bop. We'll yeah. talk to you next time. And <laughs> cheers. I'm so happy I said it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>